Hey guys, we're going to take a look at my helmet build. What parts I used, who I referenced, how I built it. Thought I'd do something pretty straightforward and simple. Like no funny business, I've been kind of goofing around a lot. There's something new I want to practice with kiting, so I figured afterwards we can go to the park to check that out. Yeah, check out these new Crocs I got. Crocs with sandals. And life get any better? I submit that it cannot. We're banging on all cylinders now, baby. Oh. What? Oh. <laughs> Let's start with the top. So on the side here, got my battery mounted, got double-sided Gorilla Tape underneath it, and then I just kind of cut Gorilla Tape around it to hold it in place better. It actually is pretty secure. This battery is way bigger than what I intended. I thought I was getting a smaller battery. They've got smaller ones out there, but the nice advantage is I don't have to charge this thing for like a week at a time. You always hear people running out of juice on their GoPros or their Cena's. External battery is like really important. So there are smaller options. I just went ahead and mounted my big one to it. On the side here, this is a Cena for Bluetooth audio, but it's a Cena Evo 10C. This model actually has a 4K action camera. So instead of having a GoPro on the middle of your helmet, I've got my audio in my camera all in one. So I don't have a big camera on my forehead. I kind of did that on purpose. They're not cheap. They run about 350 bucks maybe. The image stabilization isn't as good, but you can use software filters to do that. Now, if you notice, the lettering is backwards. This only mounts on one side of the helmet and I mounted it on the wrong side. So whenever I go to edit, I've got a 180, all the videos that come out of this because they're all upside down. The way I mounted it in there it's just by this little bracket is wedged in between the blue and the black part of the helmet here. And then it just tightens down and squeezes it. It's really tight. I might want to go back and dremel out a better area to stick this in because I didn't cut that out at all. I just wedged it in there, causing my helmet to bend a little bit. Bear. Now, at one point in time, I did have my hunter strobe mounted up here, but it wasn't really quite secure enough. These things are really meant to be mounted on a spar with Velcro. This is a great design. I kind of wanted it on my helmet. I think I might dremel out a little curve on the bottom of this, see if I can't mount it up here better again. Hunter probes are awesome. I like these. So I've got three impelter cups. I dremeled out an, an area for my earpiece, and then I picked a spot up here based on feel, just like in the videos, so I'd put my helmet on, put the pelter cup on, and then draw with a pencil where I needed to drill this in. One important thing with these is make sure they're adjusted midway, so that way you've got some adjustments when you go to put it on. I think I had this all the way out when I did it, so it only kind of fits pretty much my head. All right, quick break. I'll take you guys to a hardware store to show you how to find T-nuts that Tucker talks about. You don't want to bolt your pelter cups to your helmet just with like a regular bolt or washer because they're pretty long and there's a chance if you, if you crash and you hit your head hard enough, that bolt's gonna go through your skull. So there's uh, something that's recommended that attaches your pelter cup to your helmet that's really flush, they're called T-nuts. And it's a little misleading, they all don't look like a T, but they're used for attaching furniture pieces in a flush manner. So I'm gonna take you into a hardware store, show you how to find them and what they look like in the one I got. Also, making an indent in your helmet for the T-nut with a heated copper pipe and just burning out a hole worked amazing. You can get a tiny little piece of copper pipe at a hardware store to just get it a little bit bigger than your T-nut and you're good to go. I, that method worked really well for me. I also did get the fancier gel cups. These are really expensive. First, save some money, you don't have to get these. But while I was mounting hardware inside the cups, I actually squeezed this so hard, I punctured one side of it. So sometimes I get a little bit of gel in my ear. So that Cena does come with a microphone. So I've got two boom mics in here. One is for my radio and one is for the Cena. I also made a little wind guard. This is proprietary Kyle Glee 
technology. The radio mic does not have a flexible extension, it's just loose. So I have it zipper tied to my Cena mic, which does have an extension that's flexible. So inside each cup, I have a speaker that's sitting outside the foam here. It's either my radio speaker or my Cena speaker. And then underneath the foam inside here, it's my second speaker. So I didn't splice any wires just to have a pair of speakers. I actually have four speakers in all, two in each cup. The downside of that is you really gotta cram in wiring and whatnot in there. It's just not as clean of a build. You can actually do it pretty well. I did a very poor job. So on this ear, this external speaker touches my ear a little bit. It's not uncomfortable, but if I would have taken my time a little bit more, did a little better cable management inside, I would have had a little bit more room. Mm. Coffee. The nice thing about these Giro helmets is they got this thing called MIPS. So you got a, a plastic clear lining that's removable on the inside. And then there's a little bit of Velcro on that. So that's removable. And then you can actually route your wires down the middle. And all I did was I burned out a channel with a soldering iron, like shown in the videos. And make sure your channel's wide enough to get the wires through. And then I just hot glued the channel when I was done. Put this plastic liner back on. And then my head doesn't even touch those channels or the glue. So that's the advantage of this helmet. Get a gyro with MIPS. Finally, I've got this extension coming out of my ear cut. This is for my radio. So I do have a Baofeng radio I use. I actually do have a ham radio license I got before training. So I got that just in case. So I have Bluetooth audio. I got radio audio. And this will capture audio and video for me. And it's actually adjustable too. I can rotate over here to change the angle of the camera if I don't like it. So the Giro MIPS helmets, I do like just because they got that plastic lining in there for better cable routing, but you got plenty of flat surface for mounting things if you needed to. The only thing that kind of puzzled me is I thought Felter cups kind of clicked back and forth. See, I didn't do the greatest job. I didn't center this right when I was mounting it. Like, cause you can adjust the length up and down. I think I had it all the way down. And also the cables that come out of here and start attaching to my helmet, I didn't really like leave myself a lot of slack either. So that was another issue. A lot of my problems I had when I came to building this is just patience. I wasn't patient the whole way, but it became an effective helmet and worked really well for me. This is why I took the training. The other thing I like about Giro, it's only 40 bucks. It's pretty inexpensive. Ah, mm, that is a tasty burger. Now I actually did buy a Burn Alston helmet for kiting. These are 80 bucks, so not exactly the best bang for your buck, but they are quite light and quite comfortable. They even got a little sun flap. I mean, it's a nice helmet. This is the helmet you'll see in the aviator video. It's just not the cheapest. You can't go wrong with either helmet. All right, so if you want to go a cheap route, buy a lav mic, digital audio recorder, 20 bucks, selfie stick, and you can get an action camera for 40 bucks and sync up your audio later. I actually bought this for my shuttle. What? I can't say shuttle. Beep. You gotta be kidding me. Shuttle. Beep. I bought this for my chase cam. All right, guys. Oh. Beep. All right. Let's start looking at what I got. Here's the battery pack I got. Way too big. But that's what I got, and it lasts me forever. Here's the helmet. It's a gear o quarter, and get it with the MIPS. So the gel cups are extremely comfortable, but they're optional. And I think I might have paid like 40 bucks for them. That's a crap ton of money for just gel cups. So it's one of those things. If you don't want to spend that money, don't worry about it. Don't, I went hog wild. Doesn't mean you have to. Here's the Pelter cups I got. And when you bring it into the hardware store to find your T-nut, make sure you bring that screw with you so you know what kind of T-nut to get so it fits in. This style of Pelter cup will offer a little better hearing protection for you. Okay, so here's the Cena I purchased. And this one has that 4K action camera. And there's a slider to adjust the recording angle. It is a little expensive. Well, really expensive. But compared to a GoPro, this will record your audio and video and sync it up. It does come with speakers to mount in your Peltra cups, as well as a microphone. So it's a really, really good package. The only downside with this is the image stabilization isn't as good, but you can fix that with software filters. It does record in 4K. The battery life isn't that great, but 
like with anything, you're gonna want that external battery. This thing's awesome. I don't know why people don't talk about this replacing a GoPro for what we do. It, it's just great. I mean, like with GoPros, you, you see people like, oh, I, I thought I had it recording and it cut out on me or whatever. When you hit the record button on this, it gives you an audio cue. It'll say recording, recording stopped. It's really nice, it's really easy. So when you're all strapped up, you don't have to fiddle with your GoPro trying to take a mirror to it. You just reach to the side of your helmet, tap the button and it'll tell you. It's great, I, I like this a lot. Here's my radio kit. It comes with two speakers to mount in your Peltra cups, a push to talk finger button, a mic. Now it's not on a semi-rigid wire, but I have mine zipper tied to my Cena microphone, but that's an easy fix. You can get anything that's bendable and just attach it to that. So for 30 bucks, this is a great buy. So for my Cena, I also did some right angled USB cords just for, so I didn't have to do any cable management. You're gonna want extra memory for your Cena as well. I tried buying some dead cats. I got the wrong size. They didn't fit over my mics very well. And I don't think I need them. I think that wind guard I made cuts out the wind really, really well. So here's the radio I got. They actually used it in training. I actually do have a ham radio license. I got it a month before training. I spent a week studying, went and passed my test for 15 bucks. You also have an option of going, I. I don't remember if it's GRMS or FRS, one of those frequencies you can pay the FCC a $70 fee to have a license for certain frequencies for like five or 10 years and the license applies to you and your family. So that's another route if you wanna, if you don't wanna go ham radio. You're gonna need to get yourself a sweet t-shirt. Get a couple of them, be styling and profiling. For cheap recording gear, you can get a lav mic. Just realize on some of them, in order to record on it from a computer or certain other devices, you're gonna need this little adapter down there. Now you can plug a lav mic into certain cell phones to record, but you can also buy one of these. They do have cheaper ones as well. So you can record your audio and sync it up with video later. So here's an action camera I bought. It was under 60 bucks. So again, you can get one of these instead of a GoPro and digital audio recorder and sync it up. I think this one actually records audio too. I haven't really played with this much. I bought this for my shuttle. Oh, for crying out loud. So I got this for my chase cam. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Ah, another thing you can get on Amazon. They actually make gas cans in pink. Right, old lady. If you want to get your ham radio license, just get this book. How come we doing this? Well, why not? Well, they said it couldn't be done. Well, that's the reason, son. That's good with friends. And poor. I read through it once, took me a week. In the back, they have a test question bank. Of all the questions they could ask you. I read through that once, and that's what helped me the most. Went to the local club, paid 15 bucks, took the test, and got my call sign. I actually almost passed my, uh, I forget what the second level is, general or something like that. Missed it by, like, two questions. Man, somebody needs to get that guy a highball. Well, I said I was going to go kiting, but I lied. That's just been gusty all week, even into the evenings, going 25, 30 miles an hour. So and I was hoping to get this done, but got to go to Denver for the weekend for a funeral. It's going to be raining tomorrow. I was hoping to cram it in, but every time I look at the trees out here, it might calm down a little bit. And then they're just swaying like crazy. I'm like, nah, I got to call it. So yeah, we're just gonna leave it at the helmet build. I'll come back to it. What I was really wanting to focus on with kiting is looking forward, not looking at my wing. So looking to the left or right, but making sure I'm not staring up at it and just kind of feeling it on my harness. That's the next step in my practice is I want to really commit to not looking up and working on the feel, just checking my left or right. It's just too freaking windy. I can't, I couldn't do that this week and I'm gonna be out for a bit. So I'll throw this video up, I'll come back to it. All right, peace out, Cub Scouts. Don't get hit by a bus. Ooh, baby, baby, b -b -b baby. Ooh, baby, baby, b -b -b baby. Ooh, baby, baby, b -b -b baby.